Hey what's up everyone, Dom Designs here, and in today's video I will show you how to draw a Kobe Bryant portrait as a vector illustration in Adobe Illustrator. As always, if you're into Adobe Illustrator drawing tutorials then please consider subscribing to my channel and hitting that bell icon so you don't miss an upload. Let's start by creating a canvas of 1080 by 1080 pixel and import our sketch. Now let's turn our sketch into a template and lock its layer, and then creating a layer above it and name it Outline. For this, I'll use a black stroke with rounded caps and corners. Now let's dive into it. To begin, I'll start by tracing out the character's face using a combination of the pen tool and basic shapes. When I'm drawing faces, I like to start with one side only. The reason for that is because the image is symmetrical, we will be able to copy it over once we're done. I also like to make sure that when I'm using the pen tool that I overlap all of my lines, and I'll explain that right now. As you can see, since our lines are overlapping, I'll be able to select them both and go to the Shape Builder tool. I can then carefully option click on these two lines to delete them. Now since these two lines are separated, I'll select them both and go to join. You could also do command or control J to join any path. Now let's move over to the ear. For the ear, I'll start by using an ellipse tool which I'll place carefully. Once I'm happy with the rotation, I'll use a shape builder once again and I'll carefully click on the line inside the face to delete it. Alright, now let's draw the inside of the ear. I'll start by drawing a straight line with the pen tool inside the ear. Then to curve it, I'll select the curvature tool and click and drag to curve the stroke perfectly. I'll do this a few more times to complete the ear. Once we're done with this, I like to make the strokes look a little bit more interesting by tapering them in. For that, I'll select the stroke and bring up the width tool, which is Shift W on your keyboard, and I'll click and drag different parts of the stroke until I get something I like. I'll do this for the other parts of the ear as well. Let's then select these strokes and go to the stroke panel and make sure that they are at 7 points thickness. Alright, now that we have the left part of the head completed, I'll reflect it over to the right using the reflect tool. Make sure to select everything and option click at the center point of the top to make sure that the lines are perfectly mirrored. I'll then close off the top and bottom by joining the paths by doing command J to join them. Awesome, we now have the head completed, so let's move on to creating the eyes, the nose, and the ears by using the pen tool and the ellipse tool. Let's also make sure that we're going to taper in our lines using the width tool once more. As you can see, it just makes everything look much better. The eye is looking really good, so now that we're done, let's just copy it over to the right using the reflect tool once more.
Side note, I also like to use the reflect tool on strokes. It doesn't have to be applied to just shapes. Just make sure to join the paths at the center by using Command J or by right clicking to join to make sure that you have one consistent path. All right, we're almost done the outline of the face. Let me just complete this by filling in the nostril area. Now let's finish the outline by creating the neckline and by closing it off with a round shape. We're done the outline and now I'd like to set where the shadows will be placed. I'll create a new layer and name it Shadow Outline. I'll then draw some lines to indicate where the shadows will be placed on the face. Also, make sure to close all the shapes at the end, even if it means tracing back over the main outline. Since our light source will be coming in from the right side, I'll be closing off the shape of the shadow towards the left side. I'll make sure to go over all of the main outline as well. Let's finish off by adding the shadow line underneath the head. Great, now I'll be adding the base color to the illustration. I'll create a new layer and name it color and place it below the shadow outline layer. I'll then select the main head shape, the ear and the neck and go to the layer panel and option drag the red square down to the color layer to create a duplicate. Once we have that done, we can then hide and lock the other layers. Now let's select everything on the color layer and go to the object menu at the top and outline the stroke. This will turn our stroke into shapes, so let's unite them all together with the pathfinder. Finally, we will right click on our image and release the compound path, and as you can see, everything goes black. That's alright because if we click and delete the outer shape, you will see that we have individual shapes for the head, the ear, and the neck. Now all we have to do is give it a grey color for visual purposes and unhide the Kobe outline layer. I prepared in advance the skin colors as swatches, so I'll change all of the grey colors to this nice soft brown. Now let's finish off the base colors by adding white to the eyes and the mouth. Awesome, now here comes the beauty of having your shadow shapes prepared on its own layer. I will unhide the shadow outline layer and copy over the shapes onto the color layer. Now all we have to do is change these shapes to our darker skin tone which we have on our color palette to create the shadows. Finally, let's make sure to hide or delete the shadow outline layer. Since I forgot to create the jaw shadows, I'll just create them now and apply the same trick. We are almost done our illustration and all that's left is applying the facial hair. For this I'll create a layer and name it temporary and start drawing out the shape of where I want the facial hair to go. I'll start by drawing the left part of the facial hair and copy it over to the right and unite them with the pathfinder tool.
I'll then create another shape going around the lips. Then I'll select them both and with the shape builder I will delete the inner shape to create a compound path. Finally, all we have to do is move this shape over to the color layer and give it a black fill with a dimmed opacity to create the effect of a facial hair. And there you have it everyone. This is how I create a symmetrical vector portrait of Kobe Bryant in Adobe Illustrator. I hope you enjoyed this video and let me know in the comments below your thoughts and if you'd like to see more of these. Take care everyone and see you in the next video. Cheers! Thank you.